family, GMB family, welcome back. This is Good News Broadcast Worldwide. This is your girl, Carmen. If this is your first time listening, welcome to the family. You can listen to us live on YouTube and Facebook under G News Worldwide. That's Good News Broadcast Worldwide. We're on every Monday live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we welcome you. We want you to join us. We are bringing new teachings and topics this season with the goal to bring teaching, healing, and building to the body of Christ, the one body of Christ. And this year we have focused on the word of the year, which is oneness, oneness. And every topic and every teaching has been completely in alignment to that word. And today, we have that very topic, alignment, and it's being brought by my sister, my friend, who I love dearly, Rashida Jordan, from all the way from Dallas, Texas. And she is a speaker, coach, and encourager. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear her teaching. It is uh, with revelation and absolutely full of love and, and Holy Spirit filled. So I cannot wait until you listen to this alignment topic from Rashida Jordan. You can find her on all social media under Rashida Jordan. You can also visit the website Rashida, R-A-S-H-I-D-A Jordan, J-O-U-R-D-A-I-N.com for more information and to find information about her and her ministries. And we will have all our information on our Facebook page on Good News Broadcast Worldwide. So this is a perfect word. It has been a perfect word throughout this entire season. Every teaching has aligned exactly to oneness and alignment is just perfect for this topic tonight. So please make sure to stay tuned for this topic and to hear what Rashida is coming to bring to us today. I want to take a moment and just give a brief teaching during the beginning. And today I want to focus on Esther. Just want to take a moment and talk a little bit about Esther. Why Esther? Well, Esther, right? Esther was aligned in her purpose. She did not know exactly that that was her purpose, but she was aligned in that purpose. Here you have Esther, someone who goes through a journey in her life and you can find it in the book of Esther. And she goes through this entire journey where she is Pretty much she may feel alone except she has a, a cousin who raises her right and during that time she comes into the kingdom right that specifically under the king and gets prepared for him and she then has the opportunity to be king, queen esther during that time and the story is a beautiful story all on its own and the way the journey goes and how one releases her position and she comes into the position. The focus on Esther is in regards to her realizing her purpose, the reason why she was placed there. Last week we were talking about, uh, last week or two weeks ago, we were talking about Joseph and how Joseph found the good in what had happened and indicated that God already knew that he needed to be in that position where he was at, because of what he will be able to provide to his family and what he will be able to do for the people. And here you have Esther, who's also in the same kind of predicament where she's able to do for the people. Here, Mordecai, which is the cousin who raises her, reminds her of that because there is a moment in Esther's purpose and her walk and her journey where she is afraid she is afraid to go and speak to the king and because there was a protocol and she didn't want to break that protocol. So she was afraid to go and she was afraid to lose her life if she did so. So Mordecai reminds her and it's such a scripture that's used a lot, right? Esther 414. And he reminds her pretty much. He says in summarized version, this is Carmen summarized version. If you don't do it, I know God's going to do it. But what if you were placed for such a time as this, for this moment that you're here for this? And it kind of 
brought light to Esther. And she said, okay, let me pre prepare myself. And she prepared herself spiritually. She already knew what to do physically because she was taught to do that in order to present herself to the king. But she prepared herself spiritually and those around her helped prepare spiritually. See, sometimes it is our very circle that reminds us of our purpose and reminds us to get in alignment as much as Rashida is going to come and speak to us and teach us to come into alignment to the purpose. And Mordecai was her reminder of that purpose. And then she came and said, well, I'm going to prepare myself spiritually. And she prepared herself spiritually. So she heard, was reminded mentally and emotionally of her purpose and she prepared herself spiritually to walk into it. So I encourage you today, what is that purpose that maybe you need to come into alignment with? Prepare yourself, not only mentally, emotionally, but also spiritually to walk right into it, to no longer be afraid because the word tells us in 2 Timothy that he did not give us a spirit of fear. So when we operate in it, it's not because we're operating in something that God gave us. We are operating in something that we have chosen to embody, to take on. So in this teaching, I encourage you, what is your purpose? What is it that you need to prepare for? And how do we come into alignment with that? How do you come into alignment with that? And so right now we're going to bring on that very teaching of alignment by Rashida Jordan. And I cannot wait until you guys meet her. So let me bring her on because we are ready for this teaching. Rashida, my sister. I'm good with Esther. I, I'm I'm ready. See, Esther and that alignment message, that was for me. So now how am I to follow that? But Jesus is about to follow that because we're going to add some PS to this alignment. Thank you so much for having me on today. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for this particular topic of alignment, right? Because it's such a, a, a main teaching and such a great teaching, especially in in this word of, of the year for GMB, which is oneness. And it's a time for the body to take on that oneness. So alignment is perfect. So Rashida, if you can, can you please pray us in and then we'll just go straight into the teaching. The floor is all yours. Amen. Well, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you today, Lord, and we ask that you would give us the mind of Christ. We're asking, Father, for those who you have brought into your kingdom, Lord, that we empty out distractions and that we hear only what you have to say to our hearts and to our minds. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Father, who are listening to this broadcast. And I just ask that you will speak a clear word to them as they fall into line with the purpose and the calling that you created for their lives. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, well, welcome family. Thank you so much for having me uh, here tonight. When Carmen asked me to, to speak, I immediately, I don't make up topics, but I immediately said, okay, well, um, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And she did tell me that the theme was oneness. And so I kept thinking oneness, oneness, oneness. You all, you know that oneness is not the same as sameness, right? Oneness is not the same as sameness, but in the body of Christ, it is important that we become one. It's important that we are aligned to God's will. And so I'm going to bring to you a short message on alignment today. And ironically, what made me kind of think about it before I went into praying into the spirit about it, I was actually thinking about it from a natural perspective at first, because over the past two or three years, like many of you, I've been working from home as well during the pandemic and being home and sitting all day on the computer in front of one or two screens and your mouse, you can end up. Uh, getting tensed up and you're just like this all day. And so 
what happened to me about a year ago was that I started to experience some aches and pains in my lower back and in my hip and, you know, just things didn't feel right. I didn't feel as loose and fluid as I was when I was on the go. Well, that led me to search and find a wonderful chiro chiropractor in my area. Her name is Norquita. Shout out to Norquita Haynes at 100% Chiropractic. And I went in for my initial consultation. Fantastic team and she did the x-ray of my spine and just kind of talked to me about my habits and i told her i had been sitting in the chair for hours and just working and working and so when i came back from my results lo and behold came to find out that my spine was misaligned it was out of alignment so what does that mean so for those of you who have ever had a chiropractic adjustment let me just kind of go natural for a second before we shift gears to talk about alignment. In this consultation, I realized that my spine, which was our spine is to give support to our entire body. When that's misaligned, what happens is that you have your vertebrae, your column of vertebrae, and then you have your nerves that come out of that column of vertebrae, those bones. And when the spine is misaligned or any bones are out of place, they begin to press on the nerve. Have you ever had someone press on your nerves, right? Get on your last nerve, literally. Well, with alignment, the bones begin to get out of alignment. Maybe some of the discs and the supports in between begin to shift out of where they're supposed to be. So what happens is that now the spine, which is normally when it's perfectly aligned, will give you strength and give you support in your back and in your core. It affects every other part of your body. And depending on where the misalignment takes place, if it's in the top, in your cervical column, in your neck, it affects everything below it. How many times do you know that if someone is out of place, the higher up you are out of place, the more impact of the pain that falls below it? And so in this case, what my chiropractor had to do was give me an adjustment. And in the adjustment, it sounds scarier because you can actually, it sounds scarier and it feels good. It's like a, a good, feel good, scary. So she laid me on the table in different positions and she began to apply pressure to align the spine. And once she did it, you will hear pop, pop. And then she'll twist the neck, pop. And then she'll twist me another way, pop. But what was happening was that she was putting the vertebrae back into the original alignment and the place that it was supposed to be to give me the maximum support that my body needed. Now, what's interesting about that alignment is about two days later, I felt sick. I felt like I had a flu. I felt like I was coming down with something. I didn't know that it had to do with the alignment. So when I went back for my adjustment, I said, man, I just been feeling under the weather. I felt good when you aligned me and you cracked my back and you did that, but I just kind of felt not good. And she says, well, one of the symptoms that you are starting to heal, when we begin to adjust the spine, it releases the toxins and the toxins gets flushed out into your system. Now that's a good thing because now the body can heal itself because the toxins that were once there causing the misalignment, they're being released so they can be flushed out. So eventually you can be made whole. Why did I take time to talk about this? Because in the natural, the natural world parallels the spirit world. So if we have toxins build up in our body, just even in the sake of our spine, that causes misalignment and causes pain in the lower areas and it interferes with the message from the brain to the body. How much so if the body of Christ is not aligned with the spirit of the living God and we're not in alignment with the Holy Spirit and the word of God and God's purpose for us, how much more can we cause pain to other people? Well, when we were thinking about alignment and talking about this topic, as I began to research, let me just give you some foundation of what alignment means. I gave you a natural example in the chiropractic world, but just for the sake of definition and foundation, alignment, let me just give you a few definitions. First, alignment means that it is the proper positioning or state of adjustment of parts in relationship to each other. Another definition is that it's the arrangement of groups or forces in relationship to one another. Another definition says it's an arrangement in which two or more things are positioned in a straight line 
or parallel to each other. So you can be aligned in a straight line or you can be a parallel, but it's two or more things. It's still in relationship to their arrangement. And lastly, I love this definition. Alignment means a state of agreement or cooperation among persons, groups, or nations who have a common cause and a viewpoint. Well, those definitions of alignment can speak to us in our, in, in our businesses, in our relationships, in our spirit life, in our relationship with God. It can even speak to us with, within ourselves. So let's talk about, I told you what the definition of alignment meant. Let me tell you about some benefits of alignment before we chunk out certain areas of what alignment looks like in certain key areas. Well, one benefit of alignment, well, just like with the, with the body, when the spine is misaligned, you are going to not be as strong and have the support that you need to carry your weight or to balance things or to deal with activities that you may have to come into contact with. It's going to cause pain. So one benefit of being aligned or in alignment or in proper position is that it gives you a support system. It gives you a strength that you would not have otherwise. So one benefit is support. Another benefit is strength. When it comes to being in alignment, alignment also one benefit brings protection, right? So there's protection in numbers. When you think about the animal kingdom and you think about predators, they go after the weak and after the ones that are straying away and they go after the ones who are, who are sick or who just decided to go rogue. Right. So when lions are hunting or wolves are hunting, they're looking for the ones that are misaligned, out of alignment, doing their own thing, way off to the side somewhere, not connected to the body of Christ, not to, connected to uh, a life group, not connected to community. They're just out there misaligned. So when you are misaligned and not in alignment, it opens up the doors for attacks against you spiritually, naturally sometimes even in your body, okay? So one benefit of being in alignment is that it affords and brings protection, right? Nations, a lot, they, become in a, they become alliances of each other so that they can have protection. If I go to war, then they go to war, okay? So one, one other benefit is protection. Another one, another benefit of alignment is unity. And when we get into talking about this spiritually in just a moment, to be in unity, to be on one accord, to be in unison, in, in, in unison as a people and as a body of Christ, this is where God comes in and you see more of the demonstration of his power when we are on one accord. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to get ahead of myself, but the word of God says where there is strife and envy, there's every work of evil. OK, so when we are not in alignment with each other, when we are not in unity with, with each other, when we are just uh, really being cancer cells in the body of Christ, duplicating and doing our own thing and not falling into alignment, we also forfeit the power of God. So another benefit to being in alignment is not only does it bring support and protection and it, it, it brings about a unity or being on one accord, it also is a, a place that comes to supply provision. We'll see in the book of Acts later on, if you have some time to read it, when the body of Christ came together, everybody just put in what they had and nobody had lack at all. Why? Because they gave, every person gave to contribute to the good of the entire body of Christ, to the community, to the people. Well, nowadays it's about, you got to get yours, I got to get mine. So nobody wants to give to benefit other people. So when you are in alignment and you're definitely in alignment uh, with God and you're definitely in alignment with having the heart of God, it brings about provision in your life. People can bless you because you're in alignment. People you don't even know that God puts you on their minds will bless you because you're in alignment. You may have things and gifts and uh, gifts, talents and skills uh, naturally and spiritually that God needs. You may have material things, food and clothing and shelter, excess. You got clothes in your closet with tags on them that you haven't even worn. You have shoes that you've only worn once. You can't count how many shoes you have, how, how, how many outfits you have. And then there are people who are walking around homeless. They don't have any shoes. They don't have any socks. They don't have any clothes. You have excess, but when you are in alignment, God can use you to be a source of provision to someone who doesn't have it. 
So another benefit of being in alignment besides having uh, support and making you strong and it brings about protection and it brings about unison, it brings about provision. It also allows God to flow through you, your purpose in life. See, when you're not in alignment with God and his purpose, you can actually go and spend your life and years chasing somebody else's dreams, chasing somebody else's calling, chasing somebody else's prophecy for you. OK, so you got the first prophecy and ran off with it instead of asking God, hey, Lord, is that for me? Is that word for me? OK, so a lot of times we waste our life chasing idols and chasing things and chasing things that are misaligned with our purpose or creating goals and things that are not aligned with God's purpose for us. And then we go round and round and round in the wilderness. And now 10 to 20 years have passed and you feel frustrated and you're like, God, I don't know where I'm going and my life is a mess. It's because you may be out of alignment. So being in alignment brings about your purpose. God can get it to you. He can flow through you. He can make the calling that he has for you very clear in your life. And last and not least, accountability uh, is another benefit of being in alignment. Accountability. When you are aligned with people who love you, who will tell you the truth, who are authentic, who are transparent, they care for you. They care for your soul, your family, your mind. They care about you then that benefit of being in alignment with a group of people who care about you, there can be accountability. They will tell you, hey, you know, you, you know you're not supposed to be doing that. Or is that good for you? They'll tell you truth and love. And see, when you love alignment and you love accountability, it may hurt for a moment. But the Bible tells us that when a righteous man is chastened, it's good for him. I have groups of friends that no matter what, I can go to them and they can tell me the truth. And I would trust because they love me, they love my family, they love my husband, they love my children, they love God, they love Jesus, they love uh, all good things that God has pertaining to me and they know how to pray to. Because sometimes we might not receive that accountability initially, but I trust them. And when you're in alignment and you're committed to doing life with a group of people and community, that alignment can bring so much benefit to you. OK, so today I want to talk to you about uh, alignment. We talked about what the definition of it is. I gave you an example in the natural with the chiropractor adjustments. Right. I also gave you some benefits to alignment. I want to tell you also what alignment is not. Just like oneness does not mean same. God does not did not call us to be the same. He called us we're different. We are all individually and uniquely and wonderfully made by God. We have give different skills and gifts and talents and looks and um, thoughts and all these wonderful things that God put into us because I love the fact that God is not a robotic God. He's a God that celebrates uh, abundance and he celebrates even being generous in his creation. You can't find trees that look alike. I mean, for the sake of argument, there are over a thousand oak trees. God, why did you make that many? Because I can and I'm God. But he loves diversity. But what he does the most with the diversity is he is amazing at when people get in alignment with him, he can bring that diversity together and it's a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. So alignment is not the same as being sane, the same, just like oneness is not sameness. And alignment is not so, it's also not, Attraction doesn't equal alignment. Just because people are attracted to you and what you do doesn't mean that they're aligned with you. They're not aligned with your vision or your goal or what God has as the plan for your life. So just because, and this is a, this is a word for people who are dating and you're looking to meet somebody else. Initially, people will be attracted to you or there might be things attractive about that man or that woman that you are interested in. But never mistake, attraction for alignment. The word of God tells us even when it comes to Christian marriages and believers, um, do not be unequally yoked. You don't want to be unequally yoked. That means that you two are going in two separate directions. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you are serving him as your Lord and Savior, and then someone comes along and they're not a believer in God and they are not someone who, it doesn't mean you can't be friends, but if you're looking to yoke your life up, 
in marriage. You better be careful if you're going two different directions because one of you are going to pull the other one. And in some cases, it doesn't always go the way you think it should go. So attraction is not the same as alignment. Okay. And so we talked about some benefits of alignment. Let me just jump into some areas of alignment as it relates to um, relationship. Okay. Can I, can I jump in? Jump in. I, I want to jump in because Janelle saying amen and Dana saying preach amen. Accountability should translate into the love in the body of Christ. Dan, hi, Dan said, Hey, Jordan's amen. Um, Dana also said, amen. Unity brings a greater demonstration of God's power. I want to take a moment and um, I know you're on a roll and I do not want to disturb your role. Okay. Um, I, I want to really quick, just go into what you were sharing in regards to um, the benefits. And if you can just list those again, because I think they're crucial, right? The people who are listening right now, uh, to understand those benefits that you particularly you not go into the details, but just what it is, right? Because I have unison's provision, purpose, accountability, but I know that you had um, others, so I don't, I don't want to the people to miss out on that. Yes. And and um, so you can continue with the what is not. But if you can just quickly list those because yes. they're listening, and I think that they will be so key. That's good. And then if the, and if you all who are listening have some, put them, put them in the notes too, because I want to collect. So though some of the few, the benefits that I jotted down was number one, alignment brings support. Okay. So support, it will give you support. It also brings strength. There's strength in numbers, right? So support and strength. Alignment also brings a protection. Right. When you get into alignment with God's will, you bring about the entire Godhead for protection. So it brings about protection. It also brings about alignment also brings about unity. Or being in unison or in unison or being on one accord. Right. So if you think about the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, Acts they were all in one room on one accord praying. And then the Holy Spirit came in. So it brings about unity and unison and being on one accord. It also brings about protection. I mentioned that alignment also brings about provision when you are in alignment or you are in alignment with the body of Christ, uh, body, the body of Christ and believers or life group or small group or in community thing, your needs can be provided for as well as God using you to provide for someone else's needs. So alignment also brings about provision. It also brings about purpose. When you are aligned, especially with God, because he created you with a purpose, you won't spend your life wasting somebody else's, chasing somebody else's dream, goal, and vision for your life, or just making up stuff for your life because you're lost and you don't know your purpose. So alignment allows you to receive your purpose and your call from God. And another thing is that alignment brings accountability. When you are properly aligned, you can hold others accountable who you love and who are aligned with you. And you can also receive them holding you accountable to move in a direction to continue on in that uh, accountability. Think about it. Paul did it all the time, encouraging not only us as believers, but he was encouraging Timothy to go on to study, to show yourself approved. Don't let anybody intimidate you because you are young. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. He was constantly holding that accountability to Timothy. And then lastly, account and uh, alignment, it brings about love. It enlarges your capacity to love others. It enlarges your capacity to love yourself. And it enlarges your capacity to receive God's love and to love him back. So if you have any ones, pop those in. I want to make my list too as well. So Carmen, thank you for bringing us back to that. So those are some benefits of alignment. I also said alignment does not mean attraction. So don't get attraction confused with alignment. Okay. Some people can be in your life and they're not even in agreement with you, but they're physically there. So also don't confuse attendance with alignment. Just because people show up physically, whether they show up in your church in numbers or your business or your conferences or your meetings, or you have a thousand and one friends, 
attendance is not the same thing as alignment. Make no mistake about it. Alignment is something that you will find out who people are when you get into the fire and you get into crises with them and you get into the trenches and the battle gets heavy and the battle gets hot and heavy. You will actually see who is in alignment with you. You'll actually find out who you're in alignment with. Sometimes you're riding, you know, everybody's bragging on this is my ride or die. Most of people are just riding along. They're already dead. You're just dragging them along. You're carrying them along. Most people won't go the, the 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 full length with you. And you may find out too, you might be aligned up into a certain point until that person hits a battle. And you may actually see that you're not cut out to go the rest of the course of the distance with them. So do not mistake attendance, showing up, being present for alignment. Do not mistake attraction, somebody you are attracted to and want to date for alignment. They're two different things, so don't be unequally yoked. And then I would just also say that sometimes I, I the just the word alignment in, in itself, you can either be in alignment or you can just be a lie. You can be pretending to be in alignment. There, Judas was in the company of Jesus. Now Jesus picked him and he knew what was in Judas's heart. So he knew how it would all play out, right? Because why? Jesus was in alignment with God and he knows the hearts of man. So when he selected Judas for Judas's purpose, he knew that that came with the territory. So sometimes you may be temporarily in a season with somebody to be brought into alignment to fulfill that need for, for God in, in your life at that time or that season. And then when it's time to go, it's time to go and separate. So I want you to know, don't ever sew back together what God has severed. When something is ended, it's seasoned and God ended that season. You better be careful about trying to bring that back into alignment when the season is over. Okay, so let's jump into what does it look like to be spiritually aligned with God? I want to start here first, because if you have a foundation spiritually and because the spirit realm is the parent to the natural realm, it'll set you up for how things should be in order spiritually. So first, you know, we have uh, God, our father. And then you have his son, Jesus Christ. And then you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, God in one. All three are one, equal in power, different uh, functions, but they're all God. God has alignment. His Godhead is not in contradiction to each other. Jesus says, I'm here to glorify you, Father. And then when he prayed in John chapter 17, I really need you to spend some time in this. This is this will bless you because the whole point of oneness, Jesus whole intercessory prayer on the earth for us before he went to the cross and his intercessory prayer for us now at the right hand of the father is that father, may they be one in me just as I am one in you. So back to that, that theme and that word of one, his entire prayer and purpose for us is that we may be one in him as he is in the father. Jesus did nothing but the father's will. He spoke only what the father told him. He did only what the father told him to do. And we as believers in Jesus Christ, this is our purpose to be one in Christ to model and to be an example and live like Jesus Christ, to have the mind of Christ. As a matter of fact, we are um, te one resource I want to give you. And I'll just mention it now. There is a, a study that um, myself and four other two, three other facilitators are doing on the mind of Christ. And it's a it's a 12 week study that we are actually studying, deep diving what it means to have the mind of Christ. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about you watched a sermon online. I'm not talking about you did some philanthropic duty. I'm talking about let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what the purpose of alignment is for, is to align us with God. So God is in alignment. He's not in confusion with himself. Satan has an alignment. OK, he's not divided. Jesus said that a house divided cannot stand. So Satan, his kingdom is in alignment. OK, there is order. There is rank. How do we know? Even in Ephesians, when God tells us to put on the full armor of God, why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. I just list four ranks right there. There is an order to the evil demonic realm that Satan leads as well, and he's in proper alignment. How come is the question is that Christians have a hard time aligning? If God our Father and, and our Lord Jesus, our Savior, is in alignment, and he called us to be in alignment, we are some of the most unaligned people in the body of Christ. And this cannot be for a time such as this. Because just like at the top of the hour, when Carmen was talking about Esther, their very lives depended on it. The hour is late. The body of Christ is asleep in a lot of areas. When 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 my when my um, spine was pressing on a nerve, I would have numbness or tingling, a sensation. Well, maybe something is falling asleep. I think the body of Christ in some places is asleep. And we have to wake up out of our slumber and get back into alignment with Christ and with God's will and with the mind of Christ. OK, so God has an order. Satan, his kingdom is aligned. Well, interestingly enough, Jesus also has the order on where Satan should be. He told Peter when Peter told him when he was beginning to tell the disciples, I have to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. And then I'm going to arise. His good friend, Peter, his, his, his disciple who followed him through thick and thin. He said, no, Jesus, it cannot be. This will never happen to you. Basically, I'm not going to let you go to the cross. And what did Jesus say to him? When you get a chance to read that, that's Matthew chapter 16. Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. See, right there is an example of alignment. Alignment means in the position that you need to be in a relation to something or, or someone. Satan's position between his position to you in the body as a Christ follower, a born, a blood born, blood washed believer in Jesus Christ, a child of God. Satan's position to you should always be behind you. Get thee behind me, Satan. He shouldn't be in front of you. He shouldn't be leading your life. He shouldn't be ragdolling you all over the place and ragdolling me. And we're back and forth. His place, his alignment, his order, his position, according to Jesus, is behind us. And if Satan is not behind you and he's in front of you and he's leading you, then you're already out of alignment. And that's what's happening a lot in the body of Christ and in our churches. So God has an order of alignment. It is important for us to be in alignment with God. How do we get in alignment in our spirits with God, our father? Let me just go through some things. I want you to write these down. The first thing you get into alignment through prayer. You have to understand that your prayer to God and God's words to you in prayer, your time in prayer is the only thing that can bring you into alignment. You may know tons of scriptures. You may know the Bible back and forth from Genesis to Revelations or Revelations to Malachi. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you know. Prayer is what brings you in alignment. What was Jesus doing the entire time, leaving out in the middle of the night? He would leave his disciples and he would go in the desert or he would go in the backside of the mountain. Why? To seek God the Father in prayer. He prayed. As a Christian, are you praying? Are you getting into alignment with the will of God? Because this is what's going to bring you the mind of God. This is what's going to help you understand God's will when you spend time to talk to him. I'm married. My husband and I have been together 19 years. God already made us one when we got married. For this cause shall a Shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh, right? Boom, God's math is done. We're one. But it took us years to go from one to alignment because we were two different people. He had his experience. He had his background. He had his upbringing. He had his culture. I had the same. And so God had made us one, but yet he had to bring us together in alignment with one another. And how did that happen? That happened over the course of years. That happened through prayer. It didn't happen through without prayer. It happened through communication. It happened through fellowship. So when you are praying and you're talking and spending time with God, you are in communion with him. You are in fellowship with him. You are in relationship with him. That brings you into alignment. So one way to bring yourself into alignment with God is through prayer. Another way to bring yourself to alignment is through knowing and reading and studying God's word. 
we believe that the word of God, the Bible is the infallible, the authority of God. We don't have to agree with denominations and how you do the theological exegesis of the text. But the one thing as a Christian that you must not compromise on, that is a non-negotiable, is that you don't accept that the Bible is the word of God. It is the infallible word of God. Therefore, you have to know it. You have to study it. You have to spend time with it. You have to read it. You have to hear it. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How much time are you spending not only in prayer? How much time are you spending reading the word? yourself, not somebody else spoon feeding it to you. This is what we're doing. We're still babies when we need to be on meat. We're still getting milk. We're still getting spoon fed. We're still getting puree. When God has called us to take his word and write it on our hearts and hide it so that we might not sin against him, to bind it around our fingers and to write it on our minds, to meditate on the word, to think about it because his word, he esteems it above him, above himself. We have to spend time in the word of God. So prayer is how you align with God. Spending time with his word. He talks through his word. He orchestrates your life. He instructs you through the word of God. It is not so always deep. We want to jump in and ask for revelation and Jesus give us revelation. But you didn't even obey the thing I told you to do. You don't even read and spend time. You want some revelation and burning bushes, but you won't even just come talk to me. God wants to see your face. He wants to talk to you. He wants to. He wants you to open up the word. He will speak to that situation in your life. He will give you instruction. He will give you understanding. He will give you wisdom when you seek his face and you get in his word. So prayer and the word of God, that's one way. Those are two ways to align with, with, with the spirit, man. The other thing is I want to give you something that our pastor at our church uh, here in Plano, Texas, uh, one community church, he just did a series that laid out when you spend time with God, here are some practical things you can do. So I know you're taking notes and I love notes, but this actually helped me focus my time with God. So think of the word, the, the acronym, the word space, space, S-P-A-C-E. So how do you spend time with God? Because the premise of his message and not to pass or not to bite your message, but it's so good. I just have to give it out. OK, so not to bite the message, but to tell you that when you increase your intimacy with God, you increase your capacity to hold more from God, which increases your authority. So intimacy increases capacity, increases authority. And when you come to God, the word space means this. So first, what you do is you set an appointment with God not the word space, write this down first, set an appointment with God, make some time early in the morning, to carve out a time for you and God, not a drive by undivided attention, set an appointment with God. Keep your appointment too. That's a good idea. Don't break your appointment. Keep it. Also be still and worship. Put your worship music on. Worship is another way to come into alignment with God. You're praising and you're worshiping. You're telling God who he is. God, you are all powerful, all knowing, almighty. You are uh, the anointed one, Christ. You are telling him and declaring to him who he is. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So when we worship, we take our problems and put them aside and we put God front and center and we tell him who he is. He's the name above every name. He's the name above your problem. He's the name above your, your, your marriage that's failing. He's the name above your lack of money. He's the name above your confusion. He's the name above the sickness. He's the name above the disease. He's the name above the culture. He's the name of, he's the name above what, what the news media put out. He's the name above all names. When you worship, you, you tell him your love and your adoration for him. When you praise him, you praise him for what he's done. You put it down in faith. So when you set your appointment with God, be still and worship. Praise God. The next thing you do is then open the Bible and read. Ask God to lead you to his mind. God, talk to me today. I need to hear from you. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus prayed in the Lord's prayer. OK, so pray and read and then write. Take your journal and begin to write what God is saying to you. Begin to write what you're hearing from him. So those are four things you can do with your time with God. And last and then I'm going to move on. Let me give you what space means. After you have done those four things. The S means. 
the sins you have to admit. Confess your sins to God. So when you are with him in prayer and you are with him in study, uh, the S is your sins to admit. What sins do I have to admit? What do I need to ask God to forgive me for? What do I have to ask other people to forgive me for? What sins do I have to admit? That's the S in space. The P in space is promises to proclaim. What promises that God gave me that I have to proclaim and claim? Write down those promises. What did God say to you during that reading time? Proclaim it, claim it, believe it, hold on to it, say it over and over, declare it over your life. So that's the P. The A in space means what actions do I need to take now that God has instructed me? Sometimes we're not in alignment because we are procrastinating or we get lazy or we get afraid to take that action that God has given us. What is he prompting you to do right now? Not later, but now the A is for what actions do I need to take? The C means what commandments do I need to follow? God, what have you told me? What commandments do I need to follow? And then the E in space is what examples do I need to emulate? Not only what examples of Christ do I need to live out with my fellow man, but what examples do I need to, to emulate God uh, in you? Wash me and cleanse me. I hope that that helped you. I needed to insert that. I think it was very important. It'll give you some practical things to do when you are coming with your time of God. So what are we talking about? How do you align spiritually? Through prayer, through the reading of God's word. I gave you some uh, practical things that I just learned that I'm implementing myself, the, the acronym SPACE and coming before God. You worship and you praise. Fasting also aligns you because sometimes temptation doesn't uh, go away just because you're trying to ignore it. You have to fast, turn down the flesh, get in the spirit, turn your plate down, abstain from so that God can give you the power to overcome. The Bible says when there is temptation, God has made every way of escape. Just look for the exits. When you go into restaurants or you're going to places, you look for the exits. When you get ready to face temptation, when you are in alignment with God, he will give you what to do before that temptation comes. So you don't have to walk that way, right? So lead us not into temptation, Jesus prayed, but deliver us from the evil one. So God, keep me from temptation. Keep me from evil. Keep evil from me. But Lord, if temptation does come because I've opened the door to something, or maybe I didn't open the door to something, but it came because I'm vulnerable and I'm hurting and I'm in grief and I'm in pain and this thing looks good. Satan knows how to spit shine your apple for you, okay? He'll spit shine and he'll make it look good for you. But when temptation comes, God will give you a way of escape. OK, so when you are in alignment with God, he will protect you. He'll give you a way of escape. Some other things that I jotted down. Um, I hope you're taking notes. Carmen, this is good. If anybody else has any questions, just jump in here. But when, when you are aligning with God. And you come to him about your purpose. He will tell you what you are to be doing right now, believers, body of Christ. This is a season that Satan is taking more territory than sometimes the body of Christ. When you turn on the news, people are committing suicide in droves left and right. They feel hopeless. They feel like there's no way of escape. They feel like they feel like, what's the point? Nobody loves me. And here we are. We have the authority and we have the mind of Christ and we have the word of God and we are made in his image and we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Why are they taking their lives? When we have the light, when we have the answer and his name is Christ, when Jesus is the answer, don't let nobody trip you up. Burning sage is not the answer and uh, crystals are not the answer and whatever else people are going to for answers. Christ is the answer. He's the only one that can stabilize your mind. But we got to get an alignment. And we have to tell people about him. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Don't lose your saltiness. Don't lose your light. God is pushing back the forces of darkness with his people. You are the extension of him here in the earth. And you command great, uh, heaven is making a demand on you. 
just like you're making a demand on heaven. We're like, God, hey, Lord, we need you to line our life up and we need this new job. And we're busy praying about things. And those things are wonderful. Those things are temporary too, right? So don't don't store up treasures on earth, store them up in heaven, right? God is more concerned about people and their souls and your heart than our houses and our cars and our bigger barns. God, what would you have me to do? Where would you have me to go? Show me my purpose. Let me cut away what I've been chasing, the idols. I've had to lay down idols very painfully in my life. And I was on a mission to do the work of the ministry and do the work of God. And I was doing good with that until God charged me with idol worship about six years ago. And I walked away from everything. And I'm going to tell you, you don't want to wait till God charges you with something. And you definitely don't want to wait till you get to heaven and we stand before God and we stand before the judgment and you don't hear well done. You hear depart from me. I don't want to hear depart from me. I also don't want God to turn me over to a, a, a reprobate mind, a mind that cannot hear him anymore. I need to stay in alignment, Jesus. I need to hear you. I need you. You are the breath that I breathe. See, you have to be hungry and thirsty for God. And that's going to bring you in alignment. You have to want him more than you want things and things in that you want people. OK, so alignment is critical to our life as a believer. Now, as we close out, I just want to give you um, just a few more things and a few more thoughts. You have to be in alignment, not only vertically with God. But horizontally with people. See, I wore this shirt on purpose today and Carmen and I were joking about in the beginning. I said, listen, I'm teaching on alignment, but I wanted to wear a sweater that wasn't in alignment. Right. So it's kind of like visually, this is what it looks like to not be in alignment. And then, you know, we're going to talk about alignment. And then Carmen was in the holies of holies before the broadcast. And she says, Rashida, but, you know, actually, I do see some points of alignment. She noticed where, and she could elaborate on this. So I'm I'm just doing it poor justice because when she <laughs> said, I need to bring her in, please okay. elaborate on the alignment in the sweater. Okay. So we were talking about the whole visual aspect of not, you know, of alignment and how the sweater was to show not. So my take was that for me, every line is like a journey that we all go through. And so every journey can be different or could be similar. But if you see some of these points, they join together and they align in that journey. So that was my take on it. <laughs> so it's all yours. You know what? You see what you see this. OK, she's been with Jesus, the glow. OK, <laughs> so thank you for elaborating on that, because back to one is and back to alignment. We're all different. But the points connected. Right. And so we connect and we're in unison. I just love this. And I love her. Thank you for that. So if you're taking notes, please write that down. OK, so. Um, oh, one more thing. I, I, a couple of more things. You have to surrender your will to God's will. This is very important to come into alignment. Jesus was fully God and he was fully man. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he yielded his will. To God's will. He says, if it is uh, for you, God, please take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You must surrender and submit your will to God's will. Now, most of the time people don't want to do that because they think God will send them off to some remote uh, village somewhere. And that's not the case. I mean, if he does send you to the remote village, you better go because obedience is better than sacrifice. That's another way to get into alignment with God to obey his word. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It, he wants you to obey out of love. Alignment is not something that is forced. It is something that you must choose to surrender. And when you choose to surrender and get into alignment in love, with God? Oh my God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. You don't know what that's like. In marriage, a lot of people, a lot of women hate the word submission because it's a stigma in our society. And when we've gone through a lot of bruises and hurts and pains and betrayals in society, don't nobody want to submit to nobody because it has a negative connotation to it. But I want to tell you a beautiful side to it in marriage. A beautiful side to submission in marriage. See, my husband, he has a head and an authority. We all do. So it's God the Father, it's, it's the Son, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It's my husband 
as my head, it's me, and then it's our children. So what alignment looks like is everybody is in position where they're supposed to be. And when I'm not in alignment, or I don't want to submit, one definition of submission means uh, to yield. Another definition of submission means to duck, right? So if somebody's going to swing a bat, you better duck so it can go over your head and not hit you. And so when you are aligned in Christ and you're aligned in your marriage and you're aligned in a godly marriage, that means that my husband is still the head and I am to submit or to yield. We may have a disagreement on something, but my instruction from the head, which is Christ, is for me to yield, but I can go to God about it. I can tell him what I think and how I feel about it, or we can go to, you know, we can have differences of opinions in it. But at the end of the day, my position in alignment, I am not his head. I am not his authority. I am his wife. We are one. We are one in spirit. We're one spirit equal in God. So I can go to his head and the head can bring it about in alignment. So wives, if you don't hear anything, you have more power staying in alignment and going to God about the situation than you do tearing down your house with your hands. A foolish woman tears down her house with her hands, but a wise woman builds it up. So when it comes to marriage, God even has an order. When your kids are out of alignment or if I'm out of alignment with my husband and now I want to run him and tell him what to do. Oh, I'm out of all kind of alignment. And then I'm inviting the rebuke and the chastisement and the punishment of God in a lot of areas because why I'm not in place. It's important to be in place. A plate and being in place don't mean you're weak. If that's the case, we wouldn't have a military. They have ranks to protect us. And if anybody is out of rank, out of order where they're supposed to be, it it it, it opens a gap in a breach. I want to be in alignment. And when I started understanding Carmen what alignment meant when it came to marriage, it's not always easy. I had to yield on some things that I'm pretty stubborn on. And then sometimes I got it wrong and I didn't yield and went and tried to do it my way. And God brought me back to the wilderness broken anyway. OK, so submission to God and obeying his word is a way to be in alignment. If you love me, you would obey me. OK. Um, closing up here. How are we on time, Carmen? A couple of minutes. I want to give you all that God gave me. We're good. We are about the Holy Spirit. So what God has given you, go ahead and and um, provide it. OK. All right. I'm just going to just jot down a few other things and then we'll close. I want to do an invitation and we'll close in prayer here. Um, agreement is not the same as alignment. I was once in a conference and it was a, 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 a church ministry conference and they were going over their, uh, the theology of the church, right? And the beliefs. And then the person said, well, what if I don't agree with these? And, they, and, and, and I love this answer. The leader said, that's okay if you don't agree with it because we're not the same. We have difference of opinions and, and that's okay if you don't agree with it. But what we're asking is that you align with the vision of the house, with what God has given us to do. So here's the thing. What if I don't agree with the alignment? Agreement is not the same as alignment. It helps you when you agree. But if you don't agree back to when you're in alignment, God is so awesome where he says, come and reason with me. Come on, talk to me about what you think about that. It doesn't mean I'm going to change it because I'm God and that's my word. But I will bring you to a place. I'll elevate you in understanding and wisdom. But come and talk to me about it. What we do instead in the body of Christ, Carmen, and, and those who are watching, we go talk to everybody else about it. And we start gossiping and slandering people and becoming cancer cells and causing clicks and divisions. And we start doing all of that and we start tearing down our own body. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with it. And also, it's OK to align and not agree. But if you're aligning and you're praying, even if you don't agree with it, God will show you what it is about it that maybe you didn't see before, or maybe he'll show you something about it that maybe when you're in alignment and you have a safe place and a safe space to talk to that group about it, then you may show them something about it. So it, alignment is not something that's forced. So beware of, of people who are a griping and disagreement and all of that, because they actually can, can create some, some places that 
can allow the enemy to come in and breach. Beware of loopholes to not align. Some people get into relationships already looking for the exit. Some people will try marriage, you know, if it don't work, my game plan is I'll try this for about a year or two. We'll just see where it goes. And then they already enter into marriage with divorce in mind. Okay, that's not alignment. Alignment, when you're in agreement, there's power in agreement. As a matter of fact, there's so much power in agreement that Jesus said, where two or more are gathered together in my name, I'll stand in the midst of them. That means we don't need a whole Congress. Mm -hmm. If you and I agree, and we agree on this word of God, and we pull, we pull on heaven according to what God said by faith, he is in the midst of that, and God is the majority, it just takes two to agree. A threefold cord is not easily broken. There's power in agreement. So don't be looking for loopholes, in other words, to, to misalign. Either ask God to give you the understanding and wisdom so you could align um, properly. If you're faced with a decision where you need to know if your values align with somebody else's, then this is when you're going to see uh, when I talked about benefits, you'll see who's in the trenches with you because I need to know. My husband said this. He, he said to me beautifully. He was like, I need to know who I'm with. So when it goes down. I need to know if you're with me, if you're for or against me. OK, Jesus said, if you're not for us, you're against us. You need to know part of alignment is when it comes time to making a decision, this is for business owners and entrepreneurs. When it comes time for your board or your partners or your collaborators and you're coming together with this vision and this goal and you're trying to make a decision, alignment is important because you need to know if it comes down to this decision, are you going to stay or are you going to go? OK, and so we need to be uh, aware of that. Um, Another thing, Carmen, I thought about, we can actually not be in alignment with ourselves. I spent a lot of time talking spiritual alignment, but you can actually be not in alignment with yourself. And the Bible refers to that as being double minded. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love this. A double minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways. Okay. Now, you could be in alignment, in alignment with your business or your organization or your school or your church. And you could just be a kite in the wind in your own head with your own life. You can't make a decision to save your life. Do you want this or do you want that? And you start on something and you stop it and you procrastinate and you don't move. So a double minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways. So one thing is important is also for you to be in alignment with yourself. For you to be whole with yourself, all one. Alone doesn't mean lon lonely. You can be alone. You can be all one. You are whole with yourself. And so if you are all over the place and double-minded, and sometimes I can um, just, you know, be double-minded too. Jesus, I need your mind. Please let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. I need you to single focus my mind. Why? Because Christ, his mind was single focused. He was clear about his mission and his purpose then before he came when he was born when he went to the cross and he's still clear about it he hasn't changed it he was single in mind so you need to be in alignment with yourself sometimes you're not in alignment with yourself and you're mad because people won't come in alignment with you mm -hmm. you can't even align with yourself and then you want somebody to be in allegiance and alignment to mess mm -mm. get your house in order first Ask God to help you get in alignment first. Ask God to help you become single focused first. Do the work in my heart first, God. And then guess what? Alignment attracts alignment. People who are going the same way and they're about it. Man, there it's like a magnet. They will come. God will send them because the house is in order. You're in order. You're in alignment with God. You're in alignment with man. Forgive people for what they've done to you for offenses. That's another way to get into alignment. What does forgiveness got to do with alignment? Everything. Jesus said, you can't tell me you love God and then you hate your brother. You can't ask God for forgiveness and you don't forgive other people. He who has been given mercy must show great mercy. You have to forgive people. So when you confess your sins and you forgive people, you get into alignment with God and now God can work in their relationships. How many relationships could be restored or redeemed or reconciled if just one person gets in alignment? 
Divorce courts don't have to be full. Marriages don't have to fail if there's one person in alignment and definitely in alignment with God, because I told you about a, a majority. And when you're in alignment and you're in alignment with God, it changes things. Okay. So being in alignment with yourself is a must. So you're not crazy and attracting crazy people because you know, crazy attracts crazy. Okay. You want somebody in alignment. When I move, you move just like that. Okay. You want to be able to go into a flow. Think about your car. Your wheels have to be aligned. When your wheels are not aligned, you burn more fuel. You're more prone to accidents. You're more prone to, um, if something happened, the, 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 the car snatching away off to one direction, you're more prone to tires blowing. But when you're in a proper alignment, that car can function with the way that it was created. And that's like you and me, when we're in alignment, man, we can, we can function. We're, we're like fish in water when we're in alignment. Okay. So I, go ahead. Um, Carmen, come on in. What you got? What you got? We got any comments before we close out? Well, there's a lot of praising, right? Because everyone is listening to what has been delivered here because it's very much needed. So we have Rosa saying, come on, our God is a God of order, apart from me, Satan, and Dana saying, come on, and uh, she loves a hallelujah, he's worthy to be praised, amen, lay up treasures in heaven. Uh, Nichelle said, hello, hello, Nichelle, Donna said, this meat is so needed to the body, thank you, daughter. I, it's just absolutely what we need, right, because we need to learn about alignment, and I, I want to take a moment before we close out. Are you ready to close out? Um, but I wanted to take a moment and kind of like summarize a little bit of what you've shared because I do take notes. I take notes. Let's summarize. I like it. What you got? What you got? <laughs> so um, some, some of my notes, some of my bullet points that I'm going to share with the family, especially those who are just joining us so you can get some of this, but definitely go back to the replays on YouTube and it's on Facebook. Uh, part of the benefits of alignment, which you shared, and I'm only going to share some of the bullet points, are God can use you to be a source of provision. Um, part of the benefits is support, strength, uh, one accord, protection, provision. Uh, you also uh, purpose, accountability. You also stated that you can spend your life and years chasing others' dreams, idols, goals that are not part of God's purpose for us. And I think that's key because we need to understand that sometimes we are chasing our very own goals and own vision and not necessarily aligning to what God has called us for because we want to do certain things or because we believe we should be doing certain things and not necessarily going to him to get that direction. Um, I've been guilty. So I'm speaking about myself, family. Uh, what alignment is not, and we are not to confuse attraction does not equal alignment attendance we are not to confuse attendance with alignment just because people show up to the conference doesn't mean that they're necessarily aligned to your purpose or the vision or uh need to walk hand in hand with you uh, we will also find out that who people are when we're walking through the fire sometimes we find out who we are all right. And we also may find out that we're not necessarily aligned. And one of the things, key points that you just mentioned was sometimes we're not even aligned to ourselves, our own purpose, what God has called us, who, ha who he has created us to be. Um, there's people who can pretend to be in alignment, but they're really in a lie. They're just there to kind of get the inside scoop, not necessarily to uh, be in alignment, but they want to get the insights. So some people get have, you know, I want to add to that. Some people got their agenda. They want to get your ideas. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's just say it for what it is, right. When we're looking at the new Testament and they're writing the letters, the letters the apostles were writing to was the church. They weren't talking about the people in the street. They're talking to the church and you will see a lot of mess that was going on and a lot of, um, chaos and a lot of noise that was happening and they were trying to bring them back into alignment bring them back into the purpose and to the focus of of christ um john 17 is where you uh, indicated for us to look at you also said double-minded adult a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways uh god is one of order there is alignment even in the evilness there's alignment 
you know, people can, and I want to share a point to that because on, on that, because when you said that I was actually writing something that had to go with that, but I'll, I'll share it in a moment. Um, and we, the church need to wake up because we are asleep in the body of Christ. We're forgetting the main focus, the main purpose. What is this, this entire, our belief, our, our unity, what is based on, and there's only one foundation and that's Christ. And we're forgetting about that. We're forgetting about Jesus Christ. So to get into alignment, we are to do so with prayer, knowing, reading, and studying God's word. And you share so beautifully on what the pastor shared on space. And I thought this was a great bullet point. When we increase our intimacy, we increase our capacity, which increases our authority. So I think that that needs to be out there and spoken more of. Um, where to set an appointment and keep that appointment, uh, be still in worship, take, you know, be able to praise and worship, open our Bibles and read and write. And space stands for sin, promises, actions, commandments, and examples. Those are things that we actually, it's more of a self-analysis of what that is and actually write them out and speak them out. Because the word says to confess them. And that just means speak them out. Um, I thought this was all great. I love the fact that you said sometimes we're just too lazy to be in alignment. <laughs> it's true. It is so true. Um, when alignment is that everybody is in position where they are supposed to be, and you use that beautifully in marriage in regards to how, um, you know, the umbrella goes, right? There's, there's Christ, there's a husband, there's a wife, there's a kids. And it is surrendering our will for God's will. What I want to share in regards to that you were talking about, there's even alignment and evilness. I was actually writing this. That sometimes we align when you said, um, I first wrote this and then you said that. I said, sometimes we align to the wrong thing, right? And so that means that what, what that means when you're saying that is when, when I was writing that was, we need to know the difference. We need to understand what that difference is uh, because each path that we decide to align to, whether it's the one that God has created for us or the one we are choosing, they both come out in different outcomes. So it's really about which outcome are we heading towards? What's in our heart? Where do we want to go towards? And so we have to understand who we are right? And we're three parts. We're spirit, soul, and body, right? And so when we are in alignment with God, that means that the spirit actually rules over our, our soul and our body, right? So mm -hmm. it means that we start to truly see everything through him. And what we're seeking after is not anything that has to do with our soul and our body, right? When we're seeing, when we're fully in alignment in spirit, we are seeking him first. And right. And much as the Matthew 6, 33 says, says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. So sometimes we're seeking goals we're seeking dreams we're seeking visions. When really, when we're spiritually aligned, we're spiritually aligned, where we're fully aligned to him. All we have to do is seek his kingdom and his righteousness, which means then our soul and our body has to surrender to the, the leading of the spirit and his righteousness. That's where his righteousness we're seeking after his righteousness. And then all things will be given to you as well. So you have the eternal life. You have the alignment and all of these things that you're worrying about, whether where you're going to eat, what you're going to dress, how you're going to do, but where you're going to go, what's all those provisions are given to you as well. Everything else is given to you as well. And I love that because when it, when we see that on the flip side, when the soul starts to rule, right? When the soul starts to rule, then the alignment falls out of place. Mm -hmm. And that's because we are no longer seeking mm -hmm. his kingdom and righteousness. We might know God. We may want to be in relationship or try to get to know him, but his righteousness and his kingdom is not what we're necessarily seeking because our soul, our emotions, and our body are submitting to totally something different. So, and so when we have a strong spirit, 
that means much of what you share of how to is, you know, reading his word and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us. Because a lot of times we don't want to allow the Holy Spirit to come and transform. That's the problem. A lot of times that we have, and I just want to put that out there because I know that myself had that issue. So I'm speaking about myself. And what I'm saying about that is that what happens is that it becomes uncomfortable. It becomes uncomfortable to what we know and to what that blueprint has been in our life that the moment that the soul and the body is not the one in control and we're allowing the spirit to be the one who's leading us we tend to start having that conflict mm -hmm. and we start to want to like well, well which one is it? this one feels good but this one you know where are we heading where are we going and so sometimes we also do not know the difference because we don't know his word because we haven't connected to him and we haven't built a relationship with him. We haven't taken the time to really get into worship and praise with him to really truly know who he is and who he created us to be so we can walk in that purpose, right? Like Esther, she said, okay, fine. Mordecai had to remind her because for that moment, in that moment, what she knew her comfort was like, I can't break protocol there's no way i can break protocol because if i do i might not live and mordecai had to remind her but wait a minute what about this is the reason why you're here in the first place so why don't you walk in your purpose straighten up your crown you now queen and walk in what he has created who he has placed you in the position he has placed you but a lot of times we get uncomfortable so what i want to add to that to what you added in regards to alignment is that sometimes we need to unalign in order to align. You know, sometimes we just got to unalign mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and get rid of the things we, we think we know mm. the, th the things we think have been working and get rid of those things and let them go much of surrender our will. Yeah. But we need to unalign to those things and say, I no longer want to participate in that. I no longer want to be a part of that. I no longer want to think those things. I no longer want to say those things. I no longer want to indulge in those things and unalign, unconnect, unattach to that. So then we can get into a position of yeah. full alignment and yeah. allow the Holy Spirit to do the work Come on. that he wants to do in us. Yes, God. So that is what I will add to that is sometimes we need to unalign yes, to get our focus right. And Esther had to unalign. She, she needed to say, hey, I need to get out of this protocol, this structure of doing things a certain way. And I need to get into this position and surrender spiritually so he can be manifested. He can be there before I get there. Hmm. Before I get there, before I physically get there, he's already there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we know the story of Esther, the trajectory changed. And what would have been did not become. And instead it backfired on the person who was creating the evil behind the scene. Hmm. So, we need to understand that not only when we unalign and we get to into, into the alignment, God works the alignment to a place where we start to see that those who may have come against us and those who wanted to do us harm can no longer touch us. And we need to understand though that as well, that it also brings much of what you shared, Rashida, his protection yeah full protection in every way because when esther went and spoke she she went knowing that her life was in danger could have been in danger and instead what she received was she was received she was received and in part of that she received favor her cousin received favor the people receive favor, they receive freedom, and it was changed. There was a change in what would have been a different outcome in history. 
it was changed. And we need to understand that that in regards to our alignment, when we spiritually align to him and have a relationship with him, the outcome is no longer what we would have statistically received or what we know from generation to generation. We now break that and we have a different outcome. Create a new one. So I love that. Thank you so much for this teaching. I want to, if you can please, for anyone who is first listening to this, if you're just joining us, please go to the beginning, go back to the replay. You find it on YouTube and Facebook and Good News Broadcast Worldwide. You also find it on Rashida Jordan's page. Go out there and um, listen to this. It's absolutely amazing. I do want to mention the study of the mind of Christ that you're having for 12 weeks. We're going to go ahead and put that on our page as well for those who are listening so they can join. And um, also visit Rashida Jordan dot com for more information on Rashida. Rashida, can you, for those who are first listening and or are wanting to come back into a relationship with the Lord or are just learning about Christ, can you please lead them into a prayer to for salvation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to say, Carmen, thank you. You did the benediction. You just said, um, <laughs> I'm full. Like that is that was the icing on the cake. And uh, brothers and sisters, for those of you who are who are watching, who you may have, um, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, even those who belong to Christ. And I want to first begin by telling you that as a representative in the body of Christ, I want to apologize to you for maybe how we may have treated you or someone you know who didn't align with what we believe in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we can push people away and we don't draw them in love. And so if you've been hurt in the church or you left God because uh, you know of an offense or someone hurt you who was supposed to represent Christ, I want to apologize to you mm-hmm. on behalf of the body of Christ. And I think that that's important for accountability to let you know that God loves you. And we should have done a better job at loving you if we didn't. Mm -hmm. We should have done a better job at being an example for Jesus Christ when we fail. We dropped the ball. We messed up. We sinned. We fell short of the glory. And sometimes we give ourselves more grace and mercy than we gave you. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you right now that God loves you, that Jesus loves you. And he said that, behold, he stands at the door and knock. And if any man shall hear his voice and open up their heart to him, he will come in and dwell with them. And so this invitation tonight is not an invitation from Rashida or Carmen. This is an invitation from God himself who loves you and have pursued you with a with a jealous love, a love that is relentless. That will go to the ends of the earth, even down to death for you. And so if you do not know God, and you do not know Jesus, the son of God, whom he sent for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever Mm. believes in him, Mm. that means you're not excluded. Whosoever believes in him, that means it doesn't matter what you've done. Whosoever believes in him, it doesn't mean, it it doesn't matter if you slipped away because he's married to the backslider. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And he's married to the backslider. He wants to be in your heart and be your Lord. All it takes is for you to ask God to come into your heart. So we're going to pray in agreement, in alignment with what he has already said. That he said that if anyone confesses their sins, God will give them. He will be just to forgive them and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. So we're just going to agree to invite you in and to welcome you to get into alignment with the one who has created you and who loves you more than you ever know. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for the opportunity to be able to spread forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching. Lord, many have been hurt and broken and wounded or turned off and turned away. Lord, not because they don't think you love them, 
but they may not have felt the love from us who claim to love you. Father, I ask that you would draw them in tonight. I ask that you will restore them, that you will bring them into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that even if they once knew you and left the faith for whatever reason, I pray for mercy and forgiveness. And I ask that you will bring them back into the kingdom of light. If you are listening to this prayer and you want to invite Jesus into your heart to be in alignment with Christ, to be in alignment with God, our father, not only here in time, but in eternity then all you have to do is open up your heart, confess your sins as a sinner, for we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And ask God to forgive you for your sins. Lord, I am a sinner. I need you. I acknowledge God, my brokenness, and I cannot live without you. I acknowledge my failures and I confess my sins to you. You are the only one that can fix me because you made me. Lord, you are my hope and I need you because I have no hope. Father, I ask that you would come into my life and Jesus, you will come into my heart and live within me. Create in me a clean heart, God, and renew the right spirit within me. I ask that you would cleanse me and uh, from unrighteousness. I ask God that you would make me whole, that you would align me with you. Let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. God, I tell you tonight, I don't want to wait to tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow will hold, but I know you hold today in your hands. And I'm asking you to save me right now. And I receive by faith the salvation of Jesus Christ. I confess that you are now my Lord and Savior, and I believe and your death, burial, and resurrection power for my life. And even if I don't understand it all, I pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit and that you would lead me and teach me in all things pertaining to you. And Lord, I just thank you for receiving. I thank you that we have the opportunity to be the light and to be the salt. And this conversation, may it be the beginning of their conversations with you and their prayers for their, their relationship with you in the days and in the months and the weeks and the years to come. Father, I pray for those who are broken and in grief and grief stricken and who have lost loved ones through death and sickness and tragedies. I pray for those who feel that all hope is gone. You are our hope against hope. You are the hope of the nations, Jesus. You are the one whom the nations desire. You are the anointed one. You are the one who loves us. You lead the 99 for the one. We pray, God, that you will reach out and that you will mend broken hearts, that you will bind up wounds, that you will restore and repair marriages. God, I pray against the enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus, your word said you came so we can have life and life more abundantly. We want more of that life that comes from you. Bless our families, bless our marriages, bless our singleness. If we are not married, God, whether we desire to be or not, keep us where our members will serve you and you only, God. Father, we're asking that you would bless our children and this next generation. Father, we ask that you would go before them and lead them to their purpose, not the purpose that the culture gives but the purpose that only comes from Christ. We pray for the body of Christ. We repent as a whole, and we ask that you will bring us into unison and alignment with you. And God, that the day of Pentecost that came in, in that room, that it will be ongoing as you ignite your flame in our hearts again in this dark world. Mm -hmm. We will be sure to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And we renounce and we denounce and we cast down every assignment and every alignment from the devil, from every idol worshiper, idol worship, idol that we worship, we cast that down and renounce it. God, when you call us to unalign, you said we must take up our cross and follow you. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And you said there is not anything that we can give up for you and in your name that you won't restore 
in this lifetime or the next. So for people who are giving up and embracing, unaligning, with the things of the world to align with you. We thank you that you will supply all their needs according to your riches and glory. Bring them new friendships, new relationships. God, bring them new provision, new finances. Take care of their minds and their families and their bodies. Bring healing into their bodies. For those who are sick, I pray for healing to be released in your body. May your body line up every cell in your body May it line up with the word of God. May it line up with healing. For by your stripes, we are healed. We can call upon your name and not only be saved, but we can call upon your name, God, and receive healing in our physical body, in our emotions, our minds, our relationships, and our spirits. So we just thank you and we celebrate you and we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, thank you so very much. I appreciate you, sister. I love you. Until the next time, um, stay in behind the scenes. I'll be with you shortly. Thank you. I bless Sorry. Uh, family, if you did not catch the entire show, please make sure to go back, watch the replay. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Facebook. You can find it on Good News broadcast worldwide you can also go to rashida jordan's page and you can find it there as well but you definitely want to hear this alignment um this topic on alignment it is absolutely beautiful good news broadcast worldwide airs live every monday at 7 p.m eastern standard time and we are bringing teaching and topics that heal build and bring us to that main word of focus of oneness alignment is a beautiful beautiful topic and Rashida Jordan did a wonderful job. She is a speaker, coach, and encourager in Dallas, Texas. Please make sure and visit her at RashidaJordan.com. I am so appreciative of each and every one of you. And remember that alignment is crucial and it's important. And it's really dependent on where you want to go. What's your purpose, right? Find it. When you are in alignment, you find purpose too. You find strength, much of what Rashida was teaching us and provision and unity. And I, you know, much of what she shared was magnet, right? We actually bring that because everyone that's in alignment, somehow, some way, in the most beautiful way, find each other along the path because they're heading into the same direction. So they're like when you're in a race and you're heading to the same finish line. And so everyone's in the same boat and some are going fast and some are going smooth and some are just too tired and some are happy and some are just upset, but they're all going in the same direction with the same purpose to finish and reach that goal. And we are out as believers, we're out there going towards the same goal, which is eternal life. But in the process, we have a journey in the process. There's a transformation that happens in the process. There's surrendering that has to occur. And this uh, beautiful message that was brought by Rashida shares a lot of that. So go back, watch the replay and join us next Monday here live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook, Good News Broadcast Worldwide. Family, thank you, love you, God bless you. Until next week.